Hello and welcome to The Drug Trip. We post weekly trip reports in story format with various substances for entertainment and harm reduction. If you enjoy these kinds of videos, then please do the channel a solid and please subscribe. Also, let us know your experiences and thoughts in the comments below and we may use them in a future video. Enjoy and be safe. I was with a few friends one night when I saw a plant with small cactus pods. I remember having heard about it before when I was a few years younger. They were called Jimson weed. The word around the campfire was that if you cut open the pod and let the seeds dry out, they will turn brown and edible. I had never heard anything about dovesage, although I seem to recall hearing something about eating no more than half a pod though I'm unsure if that when I first discovered Detura or after my friends took it at my first encounter with it. Anyway, I took a few pods off the plant and decided to share them with other psychonauts that I knew. I could not find the few people I knew would have tried it, so I dried out a couple of pods anyway. A couple of days later, I saw that the seeds had turned gustably brown. At around 7pm, I swallowed about half a pod which I estimated to contain about 300 seeds. I guess two hours had passed until I started to feel the effects. I had no idea what to expect. I was watching something on TV with the lights off. I started to feel disappointed. I got up to get a drink, but I felt very heavy and I almost lost my balance when I stood up. I remember telling myself, wow, I'm flying. I'm really flying. The enthusiasm about flying came from my previous notions about powerful drugs like that. They'll make you feel like you can actually fly. At that moment, the feelings were pleasant and euphoric until a vicious feeling of a cotton mouth hit me. I glided to the sink and got a drink. A few seconds later, I had the same cotton mouth. I had terrible balance and poor depth of perception. My friend Chris had came home and didn't seem to notice anything was awry. Then my mother came home. It must have been near around 8pm by this point. It was November at the time and quite cold in Woodstock, Canada. I had been seeing some fast black dots streaking across the room like a fly buzzing around. I remarked to my mum and Chris that I thought it was quite amazing that flies are still buzzing around this late into November. I thought they would have all frozen. They had no idea what I was talking about. The next thing I remember after my flies in November observation was putting somebody's boot onto the countertop and inserting various items like a pencil, a salt shaker, crackers, a fork, a small booklet and other small objects into the boot. I can only remember telling my mum and Chris that I had some purpose to my actions, that it was a vital task that I had to undertake. After I put all the random objects into the boot, I put it back on the shoe mat, carefully and methodically. After that, I stumbled to the fridge and became frustrated after attempting to grab a hold of the fridge handle. I could not sense how far away the handle was. I finally got it, flustered and nearly exhausted from so many failed attempts to open it. I just stared listlessly into the fridge and grabbed a carton of soy milk. I looked at it, astonished at what I was holding, with my eyes wide open and mouth ajar, as if I had just prevented a lit cigarette in my dustbin from igniting some tissues and newspaper on fire. I asked Chris, wow Chris, where did I get this? He replied, uh, the fridge? At this point, they still didn't grasp the seriousness of just how stoned I was. They were aware that I was acting strangely, but couldn't think of anything that would have had that effect on me. My mum was a bit worried, and deduced that I must have taken something and told Chris to keep an eye on me. It must have been around half nine or ten o'clock, around three hours into the ordeal, when I found myself in the bathroom. Several times, as I kept walking in and out after completing some kind of task, I remember holding an oval soap dish with a brown and golden ancient Egyptian border around it. I kept trying to wash it off, and then I would place it on its side when I finished. 
Chris was standing at the bathroom door the whole time without my noticing him. Just watching what I was doing, the way someone would watch a physical altercation unfolding across the parking lot, waiting to see if it would become serious or violent enough before getting involved. And every once in a while, I would realise he was there and tell him things needed to be cleaned and that there was some problem in the bathroom. The most severe thing that I remember from that night was walking into the bathroom again. I looked at the mirror and I had noticed I had a small white stain on my t-shirt. I tried to rub it off and remarked to the stranger in the mirror that we had some the same stain. Just seconds later, I pointed out that we also had the same shirt. I became quite irritated and defensive about this imposter in my bathroom and I bitterly said to him, get the fuck out of my house. Chris just watched in shock as I was arguing with my own reflection. Who could have ever imagined it to be possible for a person to forget his own reflection and then become enraged at it? He calmed me down and assured me that I was overreacting. I have no memory of what I did immediately after that. I think I blacked out, but I was still walking around. My memory seems to have shut off. The next thing I remember, quite suddenly, as if my memory had been turned on again, was standing in the bathroom looking at my mum as she extracted a body towel, a hand towel and a face cloth from the toilet. I had no idea what was going on. She looked really worried about me. She kept asking Chris what I had taken, but he didn't know either, and they couldn't get any sensible answer from me. I had a very vague memory of having some complex purpose for putting towels in the toilet, and during this, by the way, I still had this savage dry mouth, so I had been drinking water periodically. At around 12.30am, five and a half hours after I had ingested the seeds, I had still been plagued by the abrasive cotton mouth and by a painfully full bladder because of all the water I had drunk to quench it. I had not been able to urinate at all during the peak effects or during any of my adventures in the bathroom. All the water had added up and hurt my bladder immensely. I could not manage even a small drop of urine, despite the obvious need to do so. I'm not sure how much time had passed after the incident with the towels, but my best guess is around one and a half to two hours. During the evening's final stages, my sense of identity returned along with my motor coordination. But I then began to have unpleasantly vivid tactile hallucinations of translucent spiders with long curly tails, composed of what seemed to be like fishing line. They had made me very agitated and paranoid because they had been crawling up the walls, on the floor and up my legs, in my hair and up the curtains. There weren't swarms of them, as you might have inferred, but roughly a dozen or so, visible at any moment. I became quite distressed about the situation because I felt that it was very real. Wherever I looked, I could see that their long, cumbersome tails had been making them very clumsy as they crawled. The hallucinations were so overwhelmingly vivid and tactile, because whenever I stepped on their tails, they elusively tripped up, or got snagged between my feet and struggled to go anywhere, whether along the floors or up the walls. The sensations were so tactile that I felt itchy as they stumbled up my arms and legs. I wasn't scared or overly distraught or anywhere near panicking, as one would assume. But paranoid and overwrought, I compulsively scanned the room for them and tried to see where they had came from. They had been combing the room like white smoke everywhere I looked. My mood changed from being tensely agitated to immensely irritated by them. After repeated attempts from anxiety to squash them with my feet, my vengeful efforts to rid my home of these clumsy, hybrid creatures led me to summon my dog Lucy for help. I commanded her to get them and pointed to them, floundering and limping beneath her snout. She just wagged her tail as she sniffed the floor, frantically trying to get what I was pointing at and then promptly returned to her original position to listen to whatever I said. The next day, Chris told me that I had been talking to Lucy seriously as if she were conversing with me and satisfying my curiosity about whatever topic. She followed me everywhere I went, 
always at my heels or sat attentively in front of me. There was one point during my experience, despite the distressing hallucinations that absorbed me, where I realised with a small degree of deliberate cognizance, Lucy's bizarre behaviour and sensed that she knew something was wrong with me. She had a concerned, penetrating look in her eyes every time I stopped wandering. Once again, the agonising urge to reurinate brought me back to the bathroom, and I could still see the spiders everywhere. I must have stood at the toilet with my pants down for around 20 minutes or more while I tried to go. I was too distracted by all the spiders struggling to climb up the toilet bowl. I flushed the toilet and they all managed to stay on the surface of the water, and eventually I started to pee, painfully and only a little at first. It definitely wasn't a situation I wouldn't want anybody seeing. I think the determination to drown the spiders in piss made myself finally able to pee. I had such a long, orgasmic emiction, perhaps the longest I have ever had. After that, I went to bed. I brought Lucy up and had a conversation with her about work. I don't know how long I had been conversing with her when I suddenly came to my senses and said to myself, what the fuck is wrong with me? I was just talking to my dog and I laughed. I was very glad when that was over. Would I do it again? Yes. Now I know what to expect. Next time, I will have ice cubes at my disposal to relieve the dry mouth. And this way, I won't have to drink copiously. <laughs>